Hello everyone, this is Masood Ramandi from Perfected by Blood Ministries and I'm happy to be with you with another session from uh, our chapter by chapter study of the book of Revelation. If this is your first time being in this channel, I invite you to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified anytime that we release a new video. And if you haven't received our free ebook on how to study the Bible, um, you can simply uh, go to the link that is down below in the description or uh, just directly go to perfectedbyblood.com forward slash sign up and that's how you can get this uh, free ebook as well. Okay, so we have been covering uh, 10 chapters already. Today, I want to uh, spend time on chapter 11. As, and as you know, covering everything in everything that is in one chapter in one uh, session of about 45 minutes to one hour, it's impossible. But what we are trying to do is to give you enough uh, keys so you can study it on your own. Of, or if you are interested, we are also doing a verse by verse uh, teaching. It's a membership. You can uh, check the link down below in the description section and see what it is. If uh, that's something that would uh, be helping you, we would love to see you inside our membership as well. But let's get into chapter 11. Chapter 11 has a few uh, keys that we have to pay attention to. It starts by, uh, starts by talking about a temple, an altar, and a group that are worshipping in that altar. Then it jumps into a, uh, basically into a um, well-known part of the scripture, which is the two witnesses. And I know that there has been many speculations about who the two witnesses are. Uh, or even also the two olive lamp, olive trees or the two lampstands. You're going to look at them and also eventually talks about them being killed. These two witnesses being caught up um, to a, a cloud. And after that, we get to uh, basically the story of the seventh trumpet, which is the last trumpet. I'm trying to actually help you to understand up until this point uh, on to basically chapter uh, to trumpet number seven so we can cover that and uh, basically chapter 12 in the next session so let's first read if you're not familiar with this part of the scripture let's read let's understand what uh, basically the, the first few verses of chapter 11 say and then we get into the symbology uh, and allow the spirit of God to help us to see what they mean uh, verse 11 verse 1 chapter 11 it says then i was given a reed uh, like a measuring rod and the angel stood saying um, rise and measure the temple of god the altar and those who worship there but leave out the court which is outside the temple and do not measure it for uh, it has been given to the Gentiles and they will tread the holy city underfoot for uh, 42 months and I will give power to my two witnesses and they will prophesy 1260 days clothed in sackcloth uh, these are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the God of the earth and if anyone wants to harm them Fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have power to shut uh, heaven so that uh, no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues so as often as they desire when they finish their testimony the beast that proceeds or that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them and overcome them and kill them and their dead bodies will uh, lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified then those of the peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations will uh, see their dead bodies three and a half uh, days and not allow their uh, dead bodies to be 
put into graves and those who dwell on earth will send will rejoice over them and make merry and send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth i know it was long it was 10 verses but i had to read because otherwise anytime i say anything you wouldn't have um, the context and it wouldn't make sense but now you know what it's talking about you know at least uh, the verses and we can start jumping into the interpretation or uh, revelation of what seems to be a uh, mystery okay the first thing that we have to notice is there is nothing said here that is not already in the scriptures there is nothing here that wasn't a basically type in the old testament there is nothing here that we read that was not foreshadowed uh, under the old testament scriptures what did we read we read about a temple we read about an altar we read about uh, basically olive tree we live about uh, we, we read about the lampstand we read about people who worship we read about the holy city we read about egypt we read about um, basically uh, sodom uh, and uh, also we read about turning the water into blood who did this moses we read about fire proceeding uh, from their mouth who brought fire down from heaven elijah so obviously all these uh, verses and even um, statements or even words are uh, borrowed from the old testament not borrowed in the sense of uh, to give us something similar to what was in the old testament but to actually bring out the riches of god's wisdom uh, through his spirit of revelation okay now let's begin by the temple itself john was given a read to uh, basically a read that says it was like a measuring rod and what is the point of a measuring rod it tells us it says to measure the temple and the altar and those who worship there to measure the temple so it's obviously for a purpose of measuring but now let me ask you a question why do we measure something what is the point of measuring because we want to know if the growth has happened like uh, children are growing up and uh, you have those lines uh, on the wall and you you bring them again close to the wall after two months or five months or a year or two and constantly you uh, level up uh, basically that line that shows their height what are you doing you're measuring and every measuring shows how much growth has happened so we are in chapter 11 and apparently God has been doing something up until chapter 11 and it says what he has been doing is about a temple he he has been doing something about the altar he has been doing something about those who worship there what does that mean he has been causing them to grow okay now John is given a read a measuring rod to see if this is exactly what it was supposed to be Okay. so because you only measure up until the time that uh, something is finished like you you want to um, build a house you want to put the walls uh, you already have in mind what measure what height it should be and um, when basically the workers the laborers are uh, working um, every once in a while you come you measure and you realize that okay I haven't gotten yet to that height they haven't still built this house the wall uh to that um basically um i don't know nine feet or 12 feet or 15 feet ceiling that i want so that measuring is toward knowing whether we are already there or not so obviously here uh, it's not there because the measuring is still uh continuing but let me show you actually what temple are we talking about here is this about a temple that is going to be built in Jerusalem or perhaps this is something far more glorious because uh, we read in um, Hebrews chapter 10 that it says uh, the law having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image uh, so can never be the same sacrifices that they offer continually make those who approach uh, to God in the temple uh, perfect 
uh, with regard to their conscience. So it says the law had a shadow, okay? Um, even the temple that the law was pointing at, and it was a place that the blood of an animal was brought in, it was only a shadow. But what is the substance? What is the truth? What is the thing that uh, the law was only a shadow of? Well, it's clear. Colossians chapter 2 says the substance is Christ. It's actually the body of Christ. Because the body of Christ is the temple of the Lord. Now, let me show you this. Uh, this is in Ephesians chapter 2. And then even we can see the story of measuring or the measuring rod um, in Ephesians as well. Look at Ephesians chapter 2. Verse um, 19 says, Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens. So there is a city. With the saints uh, and members of the household of God having been built. So there is a building. On the foundation, the foundation of this building, of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Okay, so let me pause here. If Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone of a temple, uh, because we are going to be reading about that also shortly. If Jesus is the chief cornerstone of this certain building, um, do you think that one day we are going to have a temple where Jesus is standing as the chief cornerstone and there are other fleshly stones or basically physical stones upon him and beside him and under him? Obviously not. Because Jesus Christ himself is also uh, uh, explained or uh, introduced to us as the foundation itself. So, uh, the foundation is Jesus Christ. The chief cornerstone is Jesus Christ. What kind of a building is this? So this is obviously, it's not a temple uh, fleshly made with hands. Okay, that's what we read later, which says, uh, verse 11, in whom the whole building fitted together grows, that's the point, into a holy temple in the Lord. Okay, so it's clear. It says, <clears throat> the building is growing, okay? And it says that the, the building is growing to be the holy temple of the Lord. Okay, but let me continue and uh, read verse 22 because every one of these um, obviously have a depth, uh, but I don't want you to be distracted. Follow with me and we get to Revelation also. Verse 22, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Listen once again. In whom you, okay, you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Okay, so what temple therefore was measured in chapter 11? It's you. It's you being built together with me, with the other member of the household of God, with the other member of the house of God, or with the other member, member of the house of God, which is basically the entire body of Christ being the temple of the living God where the spirit of God dwells. In fact, it says, in whom you also are being built together for, for a dwelling place of God, in the spirit, not in the flesh, not on earth, not in heaven, in the spirit. Okay? Spiritually speaking, there is a temple being built. The natural temple that we saw, that which came through Moses, uh, that, uh, came, that which came through Solomon, they were all uh, limited, uh, fleshly, corruptible, and they were both destroyed. There is nothing left of those temples. But there is a temple that God is building that shall never be destroyed. In fact, anytime that anything comes to destroy it, God destroys that. Because that's what we read in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 6. Uh, let's look at... Uh, well, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 says... 
uh, verse 16 and what agreement as has the temple of god with idols for you are the temple of the living god okay so you are the temple of the living god uh first corinthians uh, 6 verse 19 uh, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16 say, says, I say the exact same thing. But listen to what Ephesians said. It said, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple. What did I say? I said, you measure growing by a measuring rod. And the measuring rod was given to John to measure. So what God is saying, it says, in your process of growing, in your process of growing in your process of being built into a dwelling place for god in the spirit in your process of spiritually growing into who god says you are there is a need of measuring in every step of the way why and what are you measuring it against let's first see what the fullness is or basically what is that height that uh, eventually we need to get into look at first uh, chapter uh, four and this is in um, verse 11 chapter 4 verse 11 says and he himself also gave some to be apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and some teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ the word edifying is uh, building the act of building so it says these are all given the prophets the evangelists uh, the teachers all of that for the building up of the body of christ there you go i mean chapter two told us that we as the members of the house of god are being built into a holy temple but here it says now it's the building of the body of christ till until so let's see where that completion is where that uh, perfection is where is the place that we can say that uh, which is perfect has come where is that place that we can say the building is fully built it says until we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ did you hear the word measure because John was given a reed to measure the temple. And since the reed was a measuring rod. Now it says, until we come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Okay, so what is that perfect, uh, basically, height? It's the measure of, it's the stature of the fullness of Christ. Uh, some people say is it possible yes it's written is it possible that we come to the same exact height it is possible in fact it says the whole purpose of the body of Christ is that we can have a group of people that they have fully grown up to be exactly like the head itself that's what actually we read in uh, verse 15 it says but speaking the truth in love may grow up once again, may grow up uh, in all things into him who is the head, the Christ. The body to grow up into the head, which is Christ himself. So the point of the body is not to always just be a body. The body is supposed to be nourished by the head so that the body can have the same exact stature of the head, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Okay. Otherwise, uh, the purpose of the coming of jesus has not been fully fulfilled the reason jesus christ has come on earth is to raise up humanity to his own stature the reason jesus christ has appeared on earth is that the whole humanity could grow up into the same stature the whole reason jesus christ is being revealed is that we may all grow into him 
into the same exact stature. The reason there is something called the revelation of Jesus Christ is that his body may know him and be grown up into the same measure, which is the stature of the fullness of Christ. Okay, so now look at this. If, if you are growing in your uh, process, if you have, um, let me see if I have anything to illustrate this. Um, okay, so imagine this is, uh, this is basically a building that is being built up. So you, you have already come up um, basically uh, to a certain height. You have built, maybe I can use this side if you can see it clearly. You can even see the bricks, okay? So layers upon layers upon layers upon layers is being built up in this. Now, at some point, the measuring rod is given to John and what he does is that uh, he uses this measuring rod and he puts here and he says, let me see if this has already grown to the full stature. And he realizes that it's not. But then this happens over and over and over in the book of Revelation. So this grows and grows and grows and grows and grows until it gets to the same exact height. Okay, this is where we no longer have a just a temple within a city. The whole the temple grows to become that city. Okay, this is what what is uh, needed for us to understand. Let me just uh, switch to my screen so you can see this. Okay, so uh, we have a temple. Okay, but this temple, okay, let me put this temple. But this temple is within a city. So um, this is something like perhaps this. Okay, so this is the city. Uh, this story, in fact, uh, you see in uh, the story of the, the shadow that was under the law. Uh, once again, there was a group of people uh, they were called the Israelites and they had a city uh, which was called Jerusalem. Okay, so this city was Jerusalem. But then within this city, they had something called uh, the temple. The temple was built within uh, this city. Okay, so in the book of Revelation, there is a place that we see the, the holy temple. Uh, is expanding let me use uh, another color perhaps something like this this is expanding okay because the measuring is happening grows so that this eventually all these uh, comes and fills this city okay what does that mean that means the there is a place uh, let me switch over okay um that means there is uh god starts from uh basically obviously always from a person and that person grows and becomes perhaps two and do, those two become three and the three become 12 and the 12 grow uh, become 70 and 70 become 120 and 120 become 500 and the 500 it always is something that the lord is doing the lord is building it in the book of acts in fact we read that um, the lord was adding to the church what was he doing he was adding others as the living stones into this temple that he himself was building not man okay not man not what we try to do by creating a ministry or building a building and then having people in it and call that uh, the church what the lord was doing was the lord's doing okay it was god uh, revealing to everyone 
uh, the truth and that truth would cause them to become holy, sanctified, which means they were separated from seeing themselves. Um, or let me put it this way, uh, because I just read for you 2 Corinthians 6 verse 19 that says, you are the temple uh, of the living God. And what agreement has um, Belial with the temple of the living God? Okay. In the temple, we always have God or in pagan uh, temples, we have an image, an idol. When God says, you are my holy temple, that means there should never be any other image in you. Okay, I hope you see this so far. But what image God is speaking of? He says, no other image than that which I said should be in you. What is that? His own image. Okay, so when God was adding to the church, what was he doing? He was causing the building to grow. Okay, he was causing everyone uh, to have a more accurate understanding of who God is. That would make them a holy temple. And then during this process, he would bring them to full maturity. This is the story of measuring the temple. Okay, obviously, up until now, what we read is um, that only up until the altar is measured. Now, let me again... Uh, switch because I need to um, I need to explain this so you can see the story uh, let me switch it okay in this temple we had um, uh, this temple basically had uh, two parts there was uh, a veil in the middle that separated uh, the left part from the right part uh, we know that basically this one was called the holy place and this one was called the holy of holies or the most holy place. Okay, And the altar was in uh, this place, in the holy place. Now what we read is that apparently God has been doing something that has covered uh, everything uh, from this basically outside of this temple okay he has been doing something outside of the temple and now he has been doing something inside the holy place okay that's where we are in the book of revelation and the next thing and the next thing is to actually move here where is this this is where basically we have uh, the most holy place and what did we have in the most holy place we had something called the ark okay the ark of the covenant now look at chapter uh, 11 of revelation this is now i'm getting to the end uh, the last verse verse 19 Verse 19 says, Then the temple of God was opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen. Okay, because <clears throat> if we are the temple of the living God, individually I am the temple of God, and you are the temple of God, but you and I together are also uh, the temple of God. So let's corporately look at this. If you and I are the temple of God, and we have only been uh, up until now, we've been in the outer court and the holy place. In the outer court, experiencing uh, basically the altar of uh, sacrifice and the labor, uh, the washing that was there, and we have come into the most holy into the holy place. We have experienced lampstand life. We have experienced eating from the showbread. We have now even stood at the altar uh, of incense. Uh, that means uh, we verse 19 says that now is the time to actually go beyond the veil so that you can experience the ark of the covenant now every part of this temple is not a literal uh, furniture furniture in heaven or on earth it's not something that god is going to be building as we have read so far, all of these are the works of 
God's hand. Just as Ephesians 2 also says that you are God's workmanship. Or um, chapter um, 9 of the book of Hebrews say uh, that um, he, Jesus has not entered into the temples made with hands because uh, we know that the temple that he has entered is the temple of his own body. And you are that temple. Okay, so here we read uh, what we are seeing is that we are becoming every stone of the temple and every furniture of the temple. You are becoming, okay, this is, this is the mystery about the revelation of Jesus Christ. That it's not about something just to know, but it's something to realize and manifest also. Because we can say that we are the light of the world, but when we truly shine, we are manifesting who we are. So when we say uh, we are the lampstand and we don't do uh, basically what the lampstand does, uh, we have not become. And if you don't become the, the, the first furniture in the tabernacle or the temple, which is uh, the lampstand, how would you experience or manifest the life of the Ark of the Covenant? That is the mystery. How would you move to the most holy place if you haven't yet entered into the holy place? Okay, that is the mystery. We are moving step by step. We are growing into a holy temple in the Lord, in the Spirit. And in every step of the way, Ephesians told us, speaking the truth in love brings the, the body into the growth to the point that it grows in all things into the head itself, himself. Okay, so there is a measuring that is constantly uh, done. Now, uh, even look at the uh, some of these mysteries. I think you have to see quickly to see actually how this book is not something that is hard to understand. It's that we haven't spent time just to study it and look at the symbologies in different places. Let me show you something about this measuring in chapter 21. Chapter 21 verse um, 14 says, uh, Now the wall of the city had 12 foundations and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Didn't we read this in Ephesians chapter 2 that um, basically you also are being built into a holy temple in the Lord? But uh, it's being built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Same exact thing we read in Revelation. It says that uh, the wall had 12 foundations and on them were uh, the names of the 12 apostles of uh, the Lamb. Not the 12 apostles in the sense of John, James, Peter, uh, all those guys. The numbers don't refer to anybody. The numbers refer to what God is doing throughout the ages in his own body. Okay, because the apostles didn't stop in Peter, James, John, and I mean, uh, Paul and uh, uh, Judas and all those people. It didn't stop with them. We have had since then uh, apostles. We have had teachers. We have had uh, shepherds. We have had evangelists. So what we read here is not about, again, a group of people. It's speaking of uh, God's apostles to fulfill actually the role of government of God, the kingdom of God, that they have been the ones that have laid the foundation. Why? Because they're the ones that have been sent. That's the meaning of the word uh, apostle. They are sent with a mission to, mission to do something. What are they doing? They're laying the foundation. First Corinthians 3, Paul says, I laid the foundation and Apollos uh, basically built on it. So, in the context, he says, uh, who, is Paul, who is Paul and who is Apollos? We are the stewards of the mysteries of God. So he says, when I say I laid the foundation, I mean I reveal the mystery. Okay, so that the next person that came, he brought another thing of this mystery of the body of Christ uh, and what it is and I mean, all the good things about that. So this is how it is being built. Now, verse 15 says, And he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates, and its wall. Uh, 
pay attention it says it was a gold tree okay a gold tree gold always refers to god himself you can look at the old testament you can look at many scriptures that actually speak of the furnitures of temple some parts being uh, bronze some parts being wooden but some part was um, basically a gold and you can see the gold even in uh, the mercy seat itself it's speaking of the divine so he says the measure was divine he says it was a gold reed let's continue it says the city is laid out as a square so remember chapter 11 was about measuring and i said the thing that was measured was um was the temple but here we're talking about measuring a city why because i told you the temple is growing to become a city it's not going to be just one little temple it's going to be the entire body to become that temple because i mean the mystery of city uh, within the city having a, a camp within the camp having the outer court and then having a holy place and then the most holy place and even in the most holy place having the ark of the covenant you see how actually we go from out to in and even inner and even more inner and to the innermost okay so we are going from the body of christ uh, where everyone has just the name as being the body of christ but then we have levels of actually understanding revelation and experience with the lord there are people that are just part of this city but there are people that are actually have come into the camp where the lord dwells they have a closer uh, story but there, then there are some people that have come even into the place of the altar and the washing and they have experienced a little bit more which is actually a bit more death to the old and a washing of regeneration but then there then we see a people that have come even into the holy place where they are receiving some uh, basically enlightening from the lampstand they have received some understanding and revelation some people have gone further they are eating this uh, bread that is uh, the bread of the lord the body of the lord some people now have come to based on this strength that they have received to the altar of incense where the uh, basically offering a sacrifice of lips uh, are continually given to the lord it's where actually what what is in the heart that uh, basically revelation in the heart is finding expression in their mouth they are uh, actually uh, praying they are declaring his praise they're making him known but now he says there is another step okay so grow to get into that uh, most holy place where this uh, ark of the covenant is but that's chapter 11 chapter 21 it says i saw this temple has already grown and the, uh, the the entire city now it gives us its measure it says it's laid out as a square what is a score? Uh, it's well, let's read what it what it is. It says its length is as great as its breadth. What does that mean? That means it was supposed to be that way. That that means it was supposed to be that uh, the length would be uh, actually as great as the width and even the height so we are dealing with a square but then it says this is a city now the city i said is a temple that grown to become a city it's not a basically it's it wasn't first a city then the temple it's the temple that grew to become a city in fact let me say it this way yes there was a city but that city was corrupt okay uh within that city but god was working something in a group of people now let me put it in clear language the city represents the entire realm of christianity the entire realm of the people of god within the world okay just like jerusalem was to the rest of the nations now it says christianity is like that city but there are mixtures there are doctrines of Balaam's. There are doctrines of Jezebel. There are those who are of uh, have the doctrine of Nicolaitans. There are those who are synagogue of Satan. There are those who 
actually bring persecution and all of that and all within the realm of the church okay uh, if you haven't watched uh, our, vid our video our teaching on chapter two and three we have two videos in book of revelation playlist you can go and watch where we actually uh, talk about the realm of the lampstand it's where uh, basically the church is known as the lampstand but it's church in that level okay in the realm of lampstand and I, as i said the lampstand is not a perfect uh, place it was where we have seen all these names jezebel balaam uh, basically um, synagogue of satan all those names are there and they all represent something now <clears throat> that was the city okay but that is something within that city god gives birth to a people that are holy they have not defiled themselves with lies they have not defiled them themselves with a false image of who god is they have not believed the doctrine that is believed by the majority of this city the church they have listened to the spirit they have realized that that false image that was dominant in the, in christianity uh, they don't want to take that image upon themselves they don't believe in that image and they have kept themselves holy from that image they have not taken that image upon themselves and they are growing and god is causing them to grow because by speaking the truth in love, he's causing them to grow. And now that group is being constantly enlarging their tent. Okay, These people are constantly enlarging their tent to the point that now they can be a blessing to those who are outside. So the realm of holiness is expanding itself. So instead of just one little temple, you have the entire city. That's God's plan. The entire city to become holy. That's why we have now the holy city a city that has been fully uh, actually sanctified by the truth okay uh, they are not anymore mixed with different doctrines they don't take anything uh, received from the old uh, just as paul says the the uh, old wives fables they don't believe in um, the doctrine that has been handed down generation after generation, whether it be the wrath of God or um, the judgment of God or the rapture or the tribulation or um, basically uh, the doctrine of eternal punishment. They don't believe in those stuff. They have seen God's glory. They know who he is. They have kept themselves uh, pure. And now because they have seen, they have touched, they have heard, uh, now they are declaring the same thing to others that they also may have fellowship with them because their fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. They have been testifying constantly to the rest that they may also have the same fellowship. This is 1 John chapter 3 and this is what takes us to the story of the two witnesses this group of people they have kept themselves pure and the only thing that they have received is that which the spirit gives and not man gives is the teaching that the spirit of god by revelation gives and not what the doctrine of the church has been given has been giving them okay this is where the story of the two witnesses come in the two witnesses are the one that they have seen, that they have tasted, that they have touched, they have known, they have been with God in a closer place. And now they are bringing that, uh, basically, that truth to the rest. Let's look at, uh, actually before that, I brought you to chapter 21 of Revelation because uh, I wanted to show you something and I haven't done that yet. Look at... Um, uh, verse 17 it says then he measured its wall 144 cubits according to the measure of a man okay the golden reed that was used to measure it says it's a measure of a man it's the measure of a man i give you a few seconds to think about what I said before and, t and basically you can't tell me obviously 
if you want to pause the video right now and then leave a comment that would be great and then come and listen what actually the answer was the question here's the question it says the the golden reed by which uh, every measuring is done the temple the the altar those who worship there the city everything is measured by a golden reed and it says it's the measure of a man uh, leave a comment right now and say what these measure is okay it should be very clear okay now let's see what that measure was ephesians chapter 4 verse 13 said until we all come to the unity of the faith to the knowledge of the son of god to the perfect man so what is the measure of a man what man the perfect man what is that the son of god what was that the stature of the fullness of christ so the golden reed is the fullness of sonship the golden reed is first and foremost the lord jesus the firstborn son from the dead that measure is something that the the entire temple is growing into okay so the measure of a man which later he says it's the measure of an angel which means a messenger is the lord jesus himself the son of god the full visible expression of who god is okay that's the story now um so let's look at to the story of uh, the two witnesses chapter 11 says in verse uh, 3 it says i will give power i will give power to my two witnesses and they will prophesy okay so the witnesses are prophesying now let's look at what they are prophesying because they can't be prophesying anything that has not been given to them to prophesy okay you can't prophesy if you don't have a word of prophecy look at chapter 1 verse 1 it says the revelation of jesus christ which god gave him to show to his servants things which must shortly take place and he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant john who bore witness to the word of god and to the testimony of jesus christ to all things that he saw blessed is he listen who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it for the time is near blessed is he who keeps the words of this prophecy but where did this word of prophecy come from it said from the word of god and the testimony of jesus christ what is that verse one the revelation of jesus christ okay so i covered this in the first um video on this series you can check the playlist the first uh, one um, called the book of revelation explained explained i guess get the big picture that should be the title but even if you go to the playlist the book of revelation the first video should be this one i talked about the word of god and the testimony of jesus christ and all of that so what is the word of god it says that which was in the beginning in the beginning was the word it was the eternal thought of god concerning who man is what was that let us make man our own image okay that's the word what is the testimony of jesus christ the fulfillment of that word because jesus christ when he was raised from the dead he fulfilled that eternal word so the word literally became flesh okay so we have the eternal thought of god which is the word of god which was let us make man in our own image we have that on one part then we have the testimony of jesus christ which means we saw that one word being fulfilled in one person once and for all 
Okay, now that is where we have a word of prophecy from the eternal word to the incarnated word is given to us a word of prophecy. What is that? That this is who you are. Keep this word of prophecy. Okay, now John in chapter 11 hears that God says, I will give power to my wit two witnesses to prophesy. But look at chapter 10. Just before chapter 11 and even the very last verse, it says, And he said to me, you must prophesy again. Okay, listen guys. He says, John says, this angel told me, you must prophesy again. What does it mean? That he has been prophesying even up until then. But then chapter 11 says, I will give power to my two witnesses to prophesy. So if John was told that he must prophesy, but then we read that the two witnesses must prophesy. Who are the two witnesses? Once again, if John was told that he must prophesy, but in chapter 10, the two witnesses prophesy, who is the two witnesses? It's John himself. Now, what does that mean? Let me explain. Don't, uh, you know, don't leave. Don't dislike the video. Listen to what I have to say. And if you didn't like it, then you can hit the dislike um, but by the way, if you like the video, if you uh, are, if you think this is helpful, please hit the like button because obviously this is helping us to uh, be known to YouTube's algorithm that people actually want this kind of videos and it would promote the video. So there would be more people that would be reached out by this video naturally or organically and we don't have to, you know, uh, promote the video, the video itself would be shown to them. So uh, believe it or not, that makes a difference. So if uh, it's helping you, believe it would help others all and believe that it can help other people, hit the like button. And even if you haven't subscribed, subscribe because that also helps us to actually uh, grow in the sense of being able to spread out the word, to uh, reach out to more people. That's how YouTube works. Okay, so here we read that it says, therefore, John is himself the two witnesses. Why? First of all, when we have a number in the Bible, especially in the book of Revelation, it, the point is not the number itself. Okay? It's not about number one and number two. Or even when we say the seven, we, we're not talking about really one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're talking about uh, something specific that uh, is the, uh, God is communicating to us through that story. Two has always been the number for witnessing or witnesses. God said every word shall be established at least by two witnesses. Okay, so when we say the two witnesses here, it's more of a concept being conveyed than actually two uh, people or two person or whatever. Now, obviously, I understand there are two <clears throat> Uh, these two are also something that we can look at and see uh, what has been the Old Testament type and what is the New Testament antitype. So we can also reconcile uh, this to the context. Uh, so the entire story, first and foremost, is about witnessing. I said this. John himself in his first epistle says, um, in fact, let me just read it for you. In 1 John chapter uh, 1 and verse 1 it says that which was from the beginning that which we have heard that which we have seen and our eyes uh, with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life the life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness okay there you go john says i bear witness what does that mean that means i am a witness so thus the story of the two witnesses but listen it says and bear witness 
and declare to you. So it's not that we, I have seen, I have heard, I have touched, I have looked upon. It says all of that, that I may also declare this to you. Uh, what is he declaring? That eternal life. So what is the prophesying of the two witnesses? Life. They are prophesying life. Obviously, it means something. I mean, the simple understanding is to eradicate death from people. That's why you see later, actually, there are people that are being killed. But it's not the people. It's a false imaging people that is being killed. Okay? God is not the destroyer. But he destroyed that which, he, that which destroys the temple. That's 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16. Okay? What is that which uh, destroys, that, that corrupts this temple? This is that old image. What is that? The false perception, the false imagination concerning God and thus ourselves. Because, I mean, man is made in God's image. So if your God is false, your own image would be false. If you see God as vindictive and punishing and without, you know, with a limited uh, grace and uh, mercy up until a certain point and you don't see him as the one whose mercy endures forever then you're dealing with a false god and then you're dealing with a false uh, image in yourself and you are making yourself a temple for Belial um, I mean false god and not the only true living god uh, which was expressed fully in the person of Jesus Christ and J John says I'm telling you, I'm giving you that which was from the beginning. This is not even something that is new, later he says. He says, this is that which was in the beginning. This is what God said in the beginning. He said, let us make man in our own image. But false perception came to man. Man separated himself from God. Jesus came on the cross, reconciled man back to God, so that uh, he could declare to his brethren the goodness, the life of his own father. That's what the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ is doing. That's what the angel, which is the Lord himself in chapter 10, is doing to John. He says, go and prophesy this. Go and speak out this word. Go and first and foremost, eat this uh, word that I'm giving you so that it can, this is scroll, so that it can become part of your own flesh, so you yourself can become my witnesses. Didn't Jesus say that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall be my witnesses? So John is doing this. And he says, listen, he says, this is that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. So he says, this life of us is in the word that God said. That's our life. There is no other life. Everything else is fake. Everything else is is temporary every image that we have taken upon ourselves will be built in the eternal fire of god called the lake of fire we're going to get to all those things this is a blessing guys this is a book of blessing this is a book that can actually change you forever this is what you can read and just enjoy and to go maybe perhaps a bit more and give up what we think and what we know and give up what we were given and give up uh, every association with uh, basically false, false doctrines and embrace that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. He says, this is the purpose of what I'm saying. That's why chapter 21 is about, he says, I suddenly saw the holy city coming down from uh, heaven on earth as a bride that was adored with, uh, for uh, her husband. And I heard a voice that says, now the tabernacle of God is with man and he shall dwell in them and they shall be his God uh, and they shall be his uh, children, and he shall be his God. I mean, I paraphrase this in chapter 21 of Revelation, but 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 6, verse 19, that says, what agreement has the temple of the living God with Belial? Right after that says, therefore, come out from among them, says the Lord, and be separate, uh, and I will receive you. I shall be your God, and you shall be uh, my, uh, and you shall be the sons of the living God. Okay, this is about growing to the maturity of the Son of God. This is about uh, basically never to forget the measure. 
never to forget the Lord Jesus Christ, never to look at one another and judge and compare ourselves with one another. No, compare yourself with the Lord. Look at what your height is. Look at what your uh, basically breath is. Look at what your uh, depth is. Because that's what Ephesians chapter 3 says. Paul says, I bow my knee before the Father, after whom every family on earth and heaven is named, that uh, the God of the, the Father of glory may uh, grant you to be strengthened, strengthened with his might in the inner man, that you shall be able to comprehend with all the same what is its width and length and height and depth. Of what? Of the measure of the stature of fullness of God, that you may know the love of God and be filled with the fullness of God. Okay, and even that he says now to him who is able to do exceedingly more abundantly all that you can ask or imagine. Okay, so that means this is his plan. This is his will. And John says, guys, I've, I've tasted something. Okay, he ate, he ate that scroll and that became part of his flesh. And it caused that to be like honey in his mouth, but bitter in his stomach. What does that mean? That means it caused him to realize there is a giving up of the old. There is a being crucified with Christ kind of life so that you can also experience the honey of resurrection. Now, when John literally understood this, then he became the witness. But then in him, he says, I have the father and the son. Okay, that's two witnesses, but that's one view of this. But then there is also, um, now there is obviously so much, I can't um, cover all of this, but I'll quickly, I'm going to go through this. The two witnesses are also uh, um, explained to us by Jesus in the book of John over and over and over and over. And uh, even Paul speaks of that. Paul says, um, it is the spirit who bears witness. Okay, that's one of the witnesses. But in, uh, in John chapter, I believe, 6, uh, or maybe 7, Jesus said, it is the spirit that gives life. And then he says, my words are spirits. Okay, so the spirit bears witness, the word bears witness. There you go, the two witnesses. But then you see also the type of this in the Old Testament because he gave us uh, some things about the, basically the two witnesses uh, which can help us to understand what is the story of two witnesses about. He actually mentioned two things. He said uh, they have power to turn the water into blood and they have power to bring fire down from heaven or fire proceeds from their own mouth. So these two, one, actually the first one uh, was the man Moses under the Old Testament. The second one is Elijah. And you can see these two appearing on the Mount of Transfiguration to Jesus. Okay, And they both hear the word from the Father that says, okay, from now on, hear my son, not these two. Okay. So when you look at uh, chapter 11, you see at some point the two witnesses are killed. And chapter 11, there is a son being born. Okay, why? Because the entire plan of God is not that we may have two witnesses, is that we may grow into the full mature sonship. So that birth happens in chapter 12. But before that, there is a stage for witnessing. Yet not like, okay, now I'm witnessing to this brother and I'm witnessing to that brother. And by witnessing, we mean we go and we tell them, do you know, brother, if you die tonight, where are you going to end up tomorrow? And he says, no. And then we say, okay, then come and pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I give you my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Um, and then uh, you think you're witnessing. Well, no, that's not the witnessing. First of all, that's not the message of Jesus Christ. That what if you die tonight? That's not his message. It has never been the gospel. It has never been the true message of evangelism. But, I mean, God works still. Whatever we 
have in our hand, whatever limited understanding that we have, God still is loving and He works and He leads everyone. But that's not the message that has been given to us. The message that has been given to us is the word of life and not death. Okay, the message that has been given us is that which was in the beginning and we don't ever see death in the picture. We don't ever see judgment and punishment and wrath. All those perceptions are false and they must be burned with fire in the lake of fire. And that's what the book of Revelation is doing to us. Now, these two are simply uh, symbolic. I mean, uh, the story of Moses and Elijah, Moses turns the water into blood. Why? Because the water gives life. People drank water. Uh, but then uh, when you turn the water into blood, nobody can drink from it. So obviously Moses is, uh, or God is saying, one of the ministries of uh, basically the two witnesses is to cause the waters that people have been drinking to be turned into blood that they won't drink. That means the church has been drinking a certain water, but it hasn't been the water that the Lord has been giving. Okay, because the water that the Lord gives in like chapter 55 of Isaiah, he says, come. Uh, he says, oh, everyone who is thirsty, come to the waters. Come, drink. Why do you spend your money for what is not food and does not satisfy? Come and drink without money and without price. For as uh, basically the heavens are... Uh, higher than the earth, so are my thoughts uh, higher than your thoughts because my word, it's like the rain that comes from heaven and it shall basically cause the earth to, uh, its seed to grow and bud. Uh, it, that's the kind of word that I have. It's life-giving. Okay, so my water that comes is life-giving. Jesus said, the water that I give you shall become in you like the fountain, a well, uh, a spring, uh, springing up into eternal life. You will be drinking life from this water. But some people have been drinking water in the church. And now the two witnesses has the power to actually cause that water to not to be drank again. Okay, that's the message. Um, or even about the fire uh, that Elijah uh, brought down. Uh, that fire, again, is speaking of um, basically uh, the false uh, sacrifice uh, to be exposed. I mean, you can see uh, the story in the book of Kings. Uh, it also says that they have power to shut the heavens. Uh, that's what Elijah did. So this is all the ministration, the witnessing, the true witnessing of God, the ministry that he has been given to us. Obviously, a certain group who put themselves in this position, they give up and they are willing to receive from him. They have learned to come and receive freely. They don't work and they don't defile uh, by their own works. They have learned to be in the Sabbath of the Lord. Okay, uh, And that causes them to be the ones that can now bear witness and give this life to others. So none of the scenes in the book of Revelation is about God being against anybody, but every scene is about God being for everybody, but against that which is against them. Okay, Because guess what? You may have thoughts that are against you. You may have imaginations that are against you. You may have memories that are against you. You may have images, perceptions, understandings, wisdoms, knowledge uh, that are against you. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That's what is happening in the book of Revelation. Casting down imaginations. How? By bringing that to the obedience of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? To the obedience of the revelation of Jesus Christ given to you. Now you know the truth revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. Now you're receiving the fullness of this revelation through the book of Revelation and you submit to that and not the false perceptions that you had received in the past. Okay, so um, there is much to say about this because this connects us to the book of Zechariah chapter 4, even in that place that we read uh, there is a vision that Zechariah says that is exactly mentioned in chapter 11 of Revelation. And this is, uh, this is the, uh, basically, 
uh, vision that he sees. Uh, he sees a lampstand with a golden bowl on top of it and then um, from uh, also two olive trees we have uh, oil coming into this golden uh, bowl from the golden bowl to the uh, lampstand and the lampstand has seven branches and on each branch there is a lamp so basically we have a lampstand we have two olive trees that they're dripping oil into this bowl from the bowl the oil received in the lampstand the book of revelation says the lampstand is the church okay but uh in that story um zechariah is asked by uh the angel he says what do you see he says this is what i see he explains exactly what i just told you um and then zechariah asks uh what is this okay first of all zechariah is a jewish man He's not pagan, he's not Gentile, he knows the story of Lampstand. He has been seeing that, he has been hearing about that uh, through the stories of Moses and uh, David and Solomon, every one of those. So he knows what the Lampstand is and he knows where the Lampstand is uh, in the holy place. So when he asks, what is this? That means he's looking for an answer, he, uh, an interpretation. He says, what is this story? I mean, what is this symbolism that, are, that you're showing me? Uh, and God says, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel uh, that says, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Okay, there you go. The spirit, not by might, not by power, not by us trying to do it or getting together and making a church. Later, he says, the next verse says, for the hand of Zerubbabel has laid the foundation of this temple and he will also bring the capstone. Zerubbabel is a type of Jesus, the Christ. Jesus is the one who laid the foundation, isn't he? Isn't he himself even the foundation? But the foundation of what? A holy temple that God is building without hands. He says, this is the word to, the, to, to Zerubbabel by the Spirit. Not by might, not by power. It says this oil that you see, that means by my spirit. Don't, don't give light without the oil that the spirit gives. Don't give understandings that are false without first receiving revelation knowledge from the spirit of God. So first the oil must be received in the lampstand, then the shining. So don't shine something that God has not given. Don't teach something that God has not given. Don't give a word of prophecy that God has not given. Let all be from the Spirit. Because that's the only way that the temple shall be built. Because everything else that is built by man will be destroyed. We call it church. We call it, I don't know, fellowship. We call it whatever. They are there for a season. But then it would be removed. What is eternal is that word which was in the beginning. And that testimony that in Jesus we have seen, tasted, touched, and looked upon. And now from these two is declared to us so we can realize that we are the church of the living God. That we are the house of the living God. That we are the temple of the living God. And now we, he has making us kings and priests so that we can grow uh, and so that we can go out and be his ministers and serve just like himself without bringing judgment but always ministering from bread and wine always from the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ not to um, threaten people with death but to give them life by the gospel okay that is the message I hope this was helpful guys if you want more understanding we have as i said a membership platform where we go uh, really deep in these details uh, it's called the revelation of jesus christ it's a course under pbb revelation membership um, there are people already uh, basically in this membership and we are having a great uh, time together if you are interested and if you want to know more about this uh, click the link below in the description uh, or even you can go to perfectedbyblood.com forward slash uh, revelation membership and see what is in there um, and just try it out for uh, a season see if that's something that you want to uh, learn because as obviously you can see I, I, it's impossible to uh, explain this uh, every verse uh, takes a few hours just to go through every word every symbology and uh, basically 
to do justice to the truth. So uh, we're hoping that these uh, sessions even give you some keys. Uh, you can go just uh, read the portions that I covered from Zechariah 4, from John 4, from John 6, 7, from Revelation 11, from Revelation 21, and uh, uh, just a study some words. Get the concordance. Go to blueletterbible.org. Uh, do some word study and see how uh, the Lord himself will uh, direct you so you can have an understanding. You don't even need us. You have the Spirit of God. You, can, you have the Bible. And just spend time with him and he will show you all things. Okay, blessings to you guys. And we'll see you next week.